welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use materials and Unreal's particle system to create a particle effect for our teleporter. In last week's video, I created a teleporter script using trigger boxes. If you'd like to go back and watch that video and have a particle system for that teleporter, there will be a link in the description below. However, you don't need anything from that video in order to follow this particle effect tutorial. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. So to start off, we're going to create a new folder to hold our particle system. So new folder, particles, and then inside this folder, we're going to start by creating a material. And I'm going to call this telemat. And we're going to use this material to create the shape of our particle effect. First thing we want to do is go to blend mode and we're going to change it to translucent. And then shading model, we're going to change to unlit. And then for our immersive color, we're just going to do a particle color. So that way we can adjust the color inside of our particle system later. And I want this particle effect to be a circle that's kind of hollowed out and I'm going to end up making it inside the particle system, get smaller and then bigger again. So to get the shape of our circle, we're going to add in a radial gradient exponential. And what a radial gradient is, is simply just a circle that has one color at the edge and another color at the center. So the first one we're going to do is going to be the main circle, and then we're actually going to do a second radial gradient that will be the hollowed out circle in the middle of our circle. So for this one, we want the radius to be the full size of our circle. So I'm going to pull out from radius and do a constant, and I'm going to make this constant 0.5. And I'm also going to switch this view to be a plane, and then we'll just move this to find our plane. And so I'll go ahead and plug this into the opacity so that way you can see what's happening as we go. So as you can see, we have a simple circle that has a different color on the outside than it does on the inside. And that's because of our density. So for this circle, we want it to be pretty solid. So again, we're gonna add a constant to our density. And for density, the higher the number, the sharper the gradient. And gradient is simply just the hardness of the circle. So we're gonna make this 50, because we want this circle to be pretty sharp. So as you can see, it's a pretty solid circle, which is exactly what I want. You may want to adjust these two numbers. The radius essentially has a range of greater than zero and less than or equal to 0.5. However, you can go outside that range. Unreal won't stop you, but your circle will be a little weird. So for instance, for the radius, if we were to change it to 0.6, you can see that my circle is outside of the box that I'm given, and so it looks a little weird. So I'm going to turn it back to 0.5 and we're going to create another radial gradient so that way we can have the inside of our circle be hollow. So I'm going to copy paste it and then for this radius I'm going to make it 0.4 and just like I did with this one I'm going to pull this up to the opacity just so we can see what's happening as I do it. And then for the density for this one I want the circle to kind of fade from the center outwards so I'm going to change it to a much lower value in the density. And I'm going to do 10 and then as you can see the outside of the circle is a lot more fuzzy than the inside of the circle. However I want this gradient to be used to eliminate the inside of the circle. So what I'm actually going to do here is create an inverse of the circle. And the way you do that is by doing one minus X. And then if I pull this up to opacity, you can see that it is the opposite of what it was a moment ago. And so to get this bottom gradient to remove from the top gradient, I actually have to multiply these two values. So I'm going to pull out from this one and do multiply and that's my A, and then my B is the returned value of the inverse of this gradient. And then I want the particle color data from this, and so I'm going to pull out from this and also multiply that, and then pull the return value of these two into the multiply of the particle color, and then put that as the opacity. 
And now you can see that my circle is hollowed out in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and save. And I'm going to go back and now create a particle system. And I'm going to call this Tele Effect. And we'll just open this up. And the first thing you want to do is go to the required section. And this is where we're going to give it the material. So we want the material to be our telemat. And then we want use local space to be checked. And then inside of duration, there's a thing called emitter loops. And we're leaving that the way it is. But I just want to point this out for you. Because if you're wanting your effect not to go indefinitely, you would want to adjust this to the number of loops that you're wanting. But I want this to loop continuously, so I'm going to leave it at zero. Now I'm going to go over to spawn and I'm going to come down here and set this constant to zero as I don't want it to continuously spawn as that was showing a bunch of them. However, I do want it to be there once. So I'm going to go down to burst list. I'm going to add a new element. And the count that I want to happen within a burst is one. So now you can see it spawns in one and then eventually goes away. Now I'm going to go over to lifetime and I'm not going to change anything in lifetime, but I want to explain this min max to you for in case you're wanting a different length of lifetime. And all this is is saying I want my lifetime to be a minimum of one seconds and a maximum of one seconds. I want my lifetime to be uniform for every single circle that spawns in. I don't want there to be any variations within the lifetime of my particle effect, but if you're wanting to change how long it's there or how short it's there, you can change these numbers. And if you're wanting it to never despawn as it's despawning here, you can change these numbers to zero. Now I'm gonna go over to initial size and I'm going to change this to the distribution vector constant and I'm going to give it a size of 200. And then for initial velocity, I don't actually want this to be moving up, so I'm just going to delete it and then it'll stay in its place. And then for color over time, I want this to actually be a constant value, so I'm going to do a vector constant here as well, and I'm just going to pick a fun purpley color. And then the final thing we want to do is right click in our emitters. We're going to go down to size and we're going to do size by life. And what I'm going to do here is shrink it down halfway through its life and then bring it back to its normal size for the second half. So you want to make sure that you're in your constant curve and inside the points of that curve, it gives you two by default but I want a third one, so I'm going to add another element to my points. My first one is right at the initial zero frame. I want my scale to be one in all directions. And then halfway through, so 0.5 seconds into my lifetime, I want it to be 0.25 in scale. And then finally, for my last point, I want it to come back to one. And for that, I want the scale to be one again in all directions. And now, as you can see, it shrinks down and then comes back out. And that's all I'm going to be doing for my particle effect. So I'm going to go ahead and save both my tele effect and my tele mat and go back to scene. And I'm going to go ahead and drag these out into my little teleporters. As you can see, it just kind of continuously loops and grows and shrinks. So I'll go, to go ahead and play and look at it in the scene. It just kind of stays in there and it moves with my camera as I move. And the other one is in the other teleporter as well. So as a recap, we used materials and radial gradients to create the shape for our particle effect. And then we used Unreal's particle system to control things like the amount of loops within our particle effect, the rate of the spawning of our particle effect, a lifetime of each specific shape, the size of the shape, the color of the shape, and then finally the size of our shape over time so that we could create this fun shrink and expand effect.
it. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments, or you can join our Discord and ask them there. We make videos here every Wednesday and Saturday, but we also stream on Twitch Monday through Wednesday, so if that interests you, be sure to check that out. We've also published an app on the Google Play Store called Blast Off, and we've created a asset pack of kids' toys on the Unity Store. And by request, we've also created a Patreon. If any of those things interest you or you'd like to support us in any of those ways, all of the links for those things will be in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.